Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we shall discuss a very interesting fact about the ninth house. And many of you have sent me your uh, researches. Not many, 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 but a few. Uh, I had said this long back in one of my videos. And I'm very happy that some of you had done some researches on this and you have found amazing results. So I also want to know more about you and your experiences. And you can also do some research on this. What is that I had said? Well, I said that the uh, ninth house from every house is the creator of that house. Yes, ninth house from the ascendant is the house of your father your creator <laughs> so ninth house is also the house of your guru ninth house is also the house of god because he is the creator ultimately now many times people argue that uh, fourth house is the house of the mother so therefore the uh, father is the husband of the mother at least uh, traditionally it was, it's supposed to be like this but then it should be 10th, right? Because the 4th and the 10th are in 1, 7 axis. But then how in the universe is the ninth house, the house of the father? So ninth is the 6th uh, from the 4th. So does it mean, 6th house is enemy. So does it mean that uh, your father is the enemy of your mother? <laughs> or let's take the 11th house, your 11th house. It is the 8th from the 4th uh, house. So does it mean your elder sibling is like the in-laws of your mother or how is it like? <laughs> well, it's very important uh, that we try to see things in their right perspective. Okay? Uh, we, should, we can use the concept of uh, bhavat bhavam in a, in a right way. But we should not use it literally like uh, we do for uh, mathematics, like 2 plus 2 equal to 4. 4 minus 2 equal to 2. We should not use it like this. Okay? Because you, you take any house. I mean, uh, the third house is your younger sibling. So it's the 12th from the fourth house. So, so what does it mean? It's like your younger sibling is the loss of your mother. What does it mean? I mean, you can't make sense of it, right? So therefore, <clears throat> you have to understand that um, once, <clears throat> once you move, to each and every house and then from there when you count the different houses you have to understand you are gradually elevating yourself okay so for example why is the ninth house the sixth from the fourth house why not because your father is your mother's enemy could happen sometimes in Kaliuga. <laughs> but what does it mean that the ninth is adustana the sixth so that means whenever the ninth house gets activated, the fourth house gets hampered. What is the fourth house? The fourth house is the house of luxury. Yes. So at a higher octave, it shows your uh, materialistic comforts. And now when you talk of higher education, both are working in harmony. The fourth house and the ninth house are working in harmony. Then the sixth house becomes the house of uh, parishram as this, the hard work. So fourth house is the house of knowledge and ninth house is higher knowledge. So then they are in harmony. But when it comes to luxury, uh, materialistic pleasure and ninth house is spiritual uh, elevation, both do not go together. One is, uh, as they say, Ram is in the ninth house. Aram is in <laughs> the fourth house. Aram means peace. Okay. So therefore, if you want Ram, you have to leave Aram. <laughs> Ram chahiye to aram chhodna padega. If you always remain in your comfort zone, you may not uh, get that. Okay. So similarly, 11th house, it's the 8th from the 4th house. Why? Because uh, the 11th house is the house of desire. So the moment there is materialistic desire, your mental peace is disturbed. So it's the death of the 4th house. So your mental peace is disturbed. Okay. That doesn't mean your elder sibling is your is the in-law of your mother. It doesn't mean like that. All right. So this is regarding the ninth house. And you can do this from every other house. But from the ninth house, you check any planet. If you want to know what you did 
in past life regarding one particular planet or any particular house how do you know that it's very simple check the ninth from that house or planet yes it's, it's that simple because that planet imagine you put that planet as the ascendant okay so suppose your uh, uh, venus is in uh, capricorn for example so then let's take an example that you have venus in capricorn <laughs> now what happens if you put capricorn as the ascendant then fifth house is Taurus, and then ninth house is virgo so now mercury is the planet that will dictate venus what to do and what not to do this is very crucial even if virgo is empty still mercury is there so if there is a planet in virgo for you that planet will dictate and those of you who are newcomers to astrology don't freak out don't uh, go and say that you want to commit suicide you want to jump from a uh, 10 story building because you have a bad planet in virgo i'm talking of those people who have venus in virgo all right or if you are a virgo ascendant and you want to die don't die live all right so uh, learn astrology don't just jump to think oh my god i'm wrong in virgo this will happen that will happen don't 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 get obsessed like this <laughs> all right so venus in capricorn so the planet uh, which you have in the sign of virgo is very crucial okay and usually as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website below exoticastrology.in and yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. So this is the ninth house. So what about Virgo now? Who is the Lord of Virgo? Mercury. Where is Mercury placed? So Mercury's placement is very important in the house. Mercury's placement will tell you what kind of things you, what kind of things will affect you basically related to Venus. Why? Because Imagine like this, imagine Venus is sitting here and Mercury is like sitting here. Mercury is the guru dictating Venus. What to do? Yes, ninth house is the guru. So the guru dictates, you should do this, you should do that. Yes, that's the job of a guru. <laughs> so the ninth house from any planet will dictate what you should do. And the if the ninth house is empty, the ninth lord will dictate. Okay, so let's take an example. Suppose anybody has Venus in Capricorn. And then this person has Mercury, who is the ninth lord from Venus. Okay, not from the ascendant, not from sun, not from moon, from Venus, from Venus, the ninth lord. If that ninth lord, who in this case is Mercury, is placed in Gemini, for example. All right, ninth lord from Venus is Mercury in Gemini. So in this case, what happens? Mercury is dictating that traits related to Gemini will affect you very much. It's like Mercury is sitting in uh, Gemini and he's dictating what you should do, what you should not do. Okay. Now what's Gemini? Gemini is the sign related to communication. So anything goes wrong in your relationship related to communication or wherever Mercury is placed that sign or which house mercury is placed from the ascendant okay now in this case if uh, you are a capricorn ascendant and you have venus in the ascendant then gemini is the sixth house okay and now many of you freak out when i keep saying all this you say oh we can't understand we we don't get what you're saying well you have to go to my astrology basics playlist and learn astrology you cannot learn astrology in one night it's not a one night stand it's a yearly uh, it's like you need decades to learn slowly, okay? So if you do not understand what I'm saying, it's very basic things which I'm saying, okay? So you don't have to freak out. You don't have to get mad. You just have to go and search my Astrology Basics playlist videos. You'll find them. You'll understand. If you don't understand once, watch it twice, thrice, four times. Remember how we learned math, maths in school. Difficult, right? But still we did it. If we could do it, we can do it now also. So now in this case, you are a Capricorn Ascendant. And you have Venus in the ascendant. So ninth house from uh, Venus becomes Virgo, which is also the ninth house from the ascendant. So now suppose if Mercury is placed in Gemini, where is Gemini for a Capricorn ascendant? Gemini is in the sixth house. Okay. 
So 6,000 also quarrels, disputes, and Gemini's communication. So if you guys uh, are finding faults too much, then this can wreak havoc, okay? In this case, okay? Now if maybe Mercury is placed in Cancer for you, and with Venus in Capricorn, then that will, uh, of course, I mean, Mercury cannot be in Cancer because they will be very near, but I'm just giving an example, okay? And uh, even in this case, uh, Venus, if Venus is in Capricorn, Mercury cannot be in uh, Gemini, that's not possible. But I'm just trying to explain you with an example. You can do this for any other planet. You can do this for the seventh Lord also. Suppose your seventh Lord is in Capricorn, then also it matters. And it, it is also good uh, because once you know this, you can know what kind of guides you should look for in life. So for example, uh, if suppose uh, you have any planet in Capricorn, then Mercury is the ninth Lord. Okay. So then Mercurian people, who people who are having exalted Mercury or Mercury in the Ascendant or Sun, Moon or Mercurial Ascendants, uh, sun moon uh, is either in Gemini or Virgo or even ascendant or Mercury is their Atma Karaka okay. or they are running Antar Dasha, Mahadasha, both works or they have Mercury in Kendra or Mercury is in Digbala in the Lagna as I said you know. so these people can really help you so therefore this principle of the ninth house can tell you what kind of a guide you should look for in life okay because the problem is what we do is we will not see the planets. We will directly go to the ascendant and look, oh, my ninth house, okay. I'm this ascendant, I have this planet in ninth house, okay. So what should I do? Where should I go? It's very confusing. You, you should not expect that you should go, you, you will go to one person and that one person will sort out everything, okay. Because I know those people who are successful in life, they always have had good mentors. This is one common thing I've seen in successful people. And I'm not talking of millionaires here. I'm talking of people who are successful as parents. And parents, successful parents does not mean your son in India is studying in IIT or NIT or that's not success. Success means you have been a good father or a good mother. You have done your part. Successful people who have good married lives, not people who have failed marriages. Okay. People who have successful careers, people who have successful, uh, successfully uh, being a good disciple, you know, good spiritual life. All these four categories I have, I have seen. The one common thing I have seen is they have always had good mentors. If you do not have a mentor, you, it's not necessary that you won't be successful. But if you have a mentor, your success will go, it will like, uh, without mentor, your success is linear. With mentor, it's exponential. You know? It's like the J curve, as they say, J curve, like this. So, so it's up to you. You want to keep going like linear growth. Linear growth is very empty and boring sometimes. It's not bad, but it it gets monotonous after some time. After some time, you will need that J curve. Okay? So, if you want a J curve, you must get a mentor. Otherwise, it's not possible. It's still possible, but it's very difficult. It needs hundred times more the effort because. You don't know where I have to go, what I have to do. You're, you cannot do that yourself. It's not possible because somebody has to tell you or else you have to figure it out with experience. So, uh, which is not bad, but then you lose so much time. That much time your mentor can tell you. So, whichever area it is, you are learning astrology. It's very important that you have a mentor. It's of no good use asking uh, questions, silly questions uh, in the YouTube comments. Wherever it is, you know, Saturn is in third house, what will happen? Nobody, no astrologer can answer that question. Saturn in third house, what happens? Anything can happen. It depends. Your mentor can only tell you what happens because your mentor knows you. Your mentor knows how you behave. So your mentor knows how your Saturn behaves. Till the time you know a person, it is not possible to tell what that planet is doing in the house. Now you will say, oh, then why do you need a slow right? <laughs> if we have to know a person first to understand how planets are behaving, then why do you need a slow Very good question. The answer is, you can get an overall idea that yes, these, these are majority planets are in these houses. These thing, things are indicated. So the person is likely to be like this. 
which is which is fine that's the purpose of astrology to identify a stranger okay but if you really want guidance in your own life you want to succeed you want to go beyond that which is ordinary you want to you want j curve then you must have a mentor then all these uh, venus in third house saturn in fourth rahu in tenth <laughs> Even if you come to know Rahu in tenth is good or bad, what is the use? It's useless, right? Do you know what Rahu in tenth can do for you? That's my question. Not, not in general. For you, I am asking. Do you know that? Forget Rahu. Take any planet. I am challenging you. Can you tell me any one planet? What that planet is doing in your life, in your horoscope? Don't go by all this. Saturn in fourth house, problems in property and all this. Saturn in 10th house, problems with career. No, tell me one thing. Just one thing I want to know from you. You have sun in any house. Can you tell me? Just forget all eight planets. Just take sun. Tell me, sun is in particular house. What is that sun doing for you in your life? Not for him or her, for you. <laughs> you might have read thousand things. You know, sun in second house, this happens, that happens. But do you know what sun is doing for you? Yes, that's very difficult. <laughs> And that is where you need a mentor because your mentor will know what kind of family you come from. And then your mentor will know how that second house is behaving. Where is the second lord? What are, what, what things are going on? Yeah. Otherwise, uh, sun in second, we will keep roaming, watching all the videos of all the uh, astrologers, you know, more than 100 astrology channels, yet roaming confused. <laughs> And these things cannot be figured out during a consultation also. It is not possible. Certain things only a mentor and your guru can tell you. No astrologer can tell you. Even if you come to me or any other, nobody can tell you what that sun in second house will do for you. Unless we are like your mentor. Because your mentor knows your lifestyle. Then your mentor can tell you, okay, uh, this, is the, this is your sun. This is how it is behaving. For you, not for others. <laughs> So then sun doesn't become a dead, useless, disgusting, boring, idiotic planet sitting, doing nothing in your house. It doesn't become, a, it becomes like a lively, uh, it becomes like a lively arena where there are a lot of opportunities which open up. Even though there are challenges, your mentor can exactly tell you, this is the problem. This is the reason why you are facing the challenge. And when I say this is the reason, I don't mean to say, that your mentor will say, Actually, you know, 50 lives back, you met your uh, mother, you know, so now in this life, she has become your father and she is beating you in this life. Well, that's something really stupid, you know, going back to 100 lifetimes and then trying to pull out useless information because even if you, whatever you did in your past life, you cannot change it. The question is, how can you improve in this life? That's the duty of a mentor to tell you, how can you improve your lifestyle? Okay, that is the ninth house. That's the house of Sagittarius. That's the house of Guru and Guidance. So therefore, if you need any guidance on any particular planet, any area of life, if any area of life you are screwed up, you have put all the efforts, but nothing happens. <laughs> and especially today, these days I have seen people, you know, when it comes to matters of relationships, well, pathetic. Kali Yuga people are the most Pathetic people when it comes to relationships. They have a lot of money these days, people I see. Lots of money. There's no shortage of money I've seen. The problem is people have too much expenses, but there's no shortage of income. Very rarely that happens. But relationships, my God, miserable, pathetic. Always crying, craving, controlling. Yeah. Yes. So, what, whichever area it is, identify. You know astrology. So identify and check the ninth from those planets. Okay, then you uh, check it for yourself. What happens? And that will tell you where you should go, what you should do, and how you should do, when you should do, during the dashas of those planets you can go. Okay. Or whatever it is. Uh, if Even if anta dashas come, it is good. So for example, uh, if you have Venus in Capricorn and then Mercury anta dasha comes next year. So then next year you can uh, approach a Mercurian person. Okay? Or Mercury can represent friends also. So you know what these Karakatwas represent. Okay? You know what Saturn represents. You know what Rahu represents. You know what Jupiter represents. Okay? So that's how you judge and harness the power of the ninth house. All right? 
thank you very much for your patience and if you want to watch other videos on the ninth house i'll put it here and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation my website is down below exoticastrology.in thank you very much